work on a postcard design. So we're going with A6, okay? So in Photoshop, if you go to File and New, there's already preset options, which is good because you don't need to remember a lot of dimensions. And um, what you're looking for is to go into, there's a section at the top here, Print. And so there's all preset kind of options here. So the postcard that we're going with is A6. So choose your A6 now. For this postcard, I do want the back of it to be landscape, okay? Now the front, as I said earlier, it can be portrait or landscape, but I think when we're setting it up in Photoshop, we'll go with, see here, orientation. If you click on landscape, oh, it's going something weird, A6, and we'll go landscape, okay? Now it'll already put the dimensions in. Just make sure it says 300 pixels per inch. And here where it says RGB, make sure that's CMYK, okay? Because we're gonna print this and click create. You, you don't have to follow along if you don't know because I'll put this video up for you. Okay, so now we have one, this is our one page, okay? But there is something in Photoshop called artboards. Now you have it in Illustrator. I'm not sure if you've ever used artboards in Illustrator, but if you haven't Photoshop, it didn't have the ability to do it and now it does. What artboards does is you can have multiple pages in your document. Um, instead of having one, say in Photoshop, you'd have like a file saying postcard front, postcard front two, postcard front three, postcard back. You can have it all in the one document. So to get artboards up on this, see this palette here that says layers on it? So that will, that will probably be open for you. If it's not, you go up to window and layers. Okay, so that's where you turn it off and on. Make sure that's on. And then there's a little menu to the right here. Okay, so click on there and you'll see here, um, well, first of all, artboard from layers. What we'll do is click on that first. And we'll call it postcard front. How about that? Uh, and click okay. Okay. We we'll do another one because we need a postcard. That's the postcard front, now we need the back. So if I go back in again and we'll go new artboard and we call this postcard back, click okay. Okay, so if you look at the layers palette there, I don't know if you can make it out. Um, you'll see, actually would somebody turn the lights, Lee, would you mind just switch the lights off for me? It might be easier to see. Thanks a million. Um, so you'll see here we have to, it looks like they're two layers, but what it actually is, is if you imagine, if they're like a little group. So this is all the stuff related to my postcard front, and this is everything related to my postcard back. Can you see, if you look at the document here, let me slide over. When I go from one page to the next, I don't know if you can make it out, can you see it's jumping? If you look up, it's yeah. jumping from one page to the next, so you know which one you're on. Um, this one, postcard front, if I click on this here, there's already one layer there. Postcard back, let me close that up, doesn't have any layers in it just yet. So I'm going to click into it. I'm going to put a layer in there. See down here, there's a, this little option, it looks like a page. So we put a layer in. Um, so you need to do that first so you actually have a layer to put information on. Okay, so our postcard, we did a little sketch up there on the, the whiteboard. We're going to divide the page in half right down the middle. <clears throat> and the right side is going to be for the address and the stamp. So, there's a few ways of doing this. I am going to do it the lazy way because I don't want to have to figure out what half of 148.5 is. Um, like you could, let me just zoom in. If you wanted to do it by maths, if you look at the rulers up the top here, you know, you could kind of figure out oh, it's 148.5, divide it in half. I'm too lazy to do that. So what I usually do is um, I would draw I draw a box like this and then I go up to this tool here and then I turn this show transform controls I turn that on and see see that there that's the very middle of that document okay so I showed you this before it's the same in Illustrator and it's the same in Cork or in InDesign and um, when you go into your rulers and you click and drag do you guys remember this you can you can kind of drag a guide. Does this kind of make sense? So that's the very middle of that, okay? Because I'm too lazy to figure out the, the maths. So if I go up to select, deselect, okay. 
what could we do then? Do you know what I might do? I might divide it in half sort of this way. Now this might be easier because it's, oh, no, it's not. We do it the same way. If I go again up to this marquee tool, if I draw a rectangle down like that, if I come up to this move tool, and this is the very center of that there. Select, deselect. Okay, so that's the middle of my page. So what we could do is, maybe this section down here, we can put some lines in for an address. We put a stamp there and we'll put another line down here. So we put them all on this one layer. And actually, I like to name layers. Um, try get used to doing that. So instead of layer one, if we double click here and we'll call it um, lines or something like that. <clears throat> okay, what color will we make them? What do you think? Will we go with black? Black or gray? I mean, I guess if your design, let's say the design on the front was something unusual, like a red or a blue or an orange or something, and you wanted the lines to be a different color other than black, go with it. They shouldn't be anything too light, though. If you're going to go with an orange or a blue or something, make it kind of dark. Um, okay, so we, have, we actually have black down here already. The easiest way to do a line, mm -mm, where is it? We could use the pencil tool, I guess, would probably be the easiest way to do it. Um, if you click on this, so it's up here. It might look like a paintbrush, but if you click onto the paintbrush and come down to this pencil tool, that's one way of doing it anyway. And then up the top here, in terms of the thickness of it, um, you can make it thicker or thinner. It's on two pixels at the moment, or it's on one, sorry. I might change it to two, and we'll just see what it looks like at two. Okay, so what I'm going to do is with these lines here, uh, what does my drawing, my drawing is a little bit of a gap at the top. So if you want to draw a perfectly straight line, like it's kind of tricky freehand, you might be kind of going all over the place. If you hold down the shift button, so shift is just above the control button there, it looks like an upwards arrow. If you click on shift while you're drawing, Photoshop will keep the line straight. So that's kind of handy to know. Okay. Let's just look at that. If we go view, um, where is it? Do, 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 do. Oh, trying to turn the guides off. Actually, the quick way on the on the keyboard would be much quicker. If you hit command and the semicolon button, it turns them off. So actually, two pixels is okay. It's not too thin. It's not too thick. Okay. The next thing will be we'll draw our um, lines this way. Okay. So. Let's see, what does this postcard look like? That has sort of three lines, and this one has none, and that one has three. I think three lines should do, because you'd have the street name, you'd have the town, maybe the country. That would probably be enough. So, again, the same thing. If you hold down Shift, oops, let me undo that, and draw a straight line. Okay, now, if you want to, let me just turn that off. If you want to copy that line, okay, you know, you could sort of, you know, eyeball it. You could bring guides in and line it up and kind of try to get them the exact same size because what you don't want is something. Let me do something here. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah. You know, you don't want something, say, like that where it's all completely off. Um, let me zoom in. So if we want to copy that line, what you can do is this marquee tool, if I go to that, and if I just select over that, okay, and if I come up to this move tool, okay, there's a quick way, if you get used to kind of keyboard commands, there's a really quick way, and I'm going to show you, you won't be able to see what I'm doing, but you'll see it happening on screen. <clears throat> In any of these programs, if you want to copy something, so I want to copy that line, you can go edit, copy, edit, paste, you know, that's a one way to do it. But a quick way, if you hold down Alt, look at that black arrow and you'll see what happens. See the way a second arrow appears? So this is just to show you as a quick way of doing it. If I hold down Alt and I get that second arrow and if I start to drag, it copies, it automatically copies that line. Okay, and then I can do it again. Oh, sugar. Copying the artboard. Mm, let me undo that. Okay, let's go again. Okay, you could, that's just one way of doing it. You could go edit, copy, edit, paste, and you'd get. Oh, 
Oh, why is it doing that? Oh, sugar. Sorry, guys. It's doing, it's for some weird reason made a new, new layer for some bizarre reason. So I don't know why I did that. Let's try it again. If we go over that, select the bit we want, edit, copy, edit, paste, just to show you more than one way of doing the same thing. Um, there it is there. I'm just using the arrows to move it up and down. Will we do a fourth line? What do you think? Yeah, yeah let's go with that. Um, I'm going to do it the other way. If I go like that, I'm holding down Alt and it's making... Why is it doing that? It's doing something weird. Come on. Oh, do you know what? It's automatically made a second layer. That must be some weird new thing. Okay, we have it there. Okay, so there is our four lines. Now, they probably need to be spaced out a little bit better. Well, it's not bad. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to put a little square or rectangle up the top for the stamp to go on. Um, same thing, let's make, we could make a new layer if you want, and we we'll call it stamp. <clears throat> same thing applies, instead of just doing a line with the pencil, if you go to the rectangle marquee tool, and we'll do a sort of rectangle shape. Okay, this is slightly different. You draw a rectangle shape, and then what you want to do is put a stroke around it, okay? So the way that you do that is edit, stroke. Okay, so the lines were all two pixels, so we'll keep the same weight. It looks kind of blurry there, doesn't it? Um, if we put a number two in there, color black. Now, the location is to do it when you look at, see this here, this is called an ant trail, obviously, because it looks like little ants marching around. You can have the stroke on the center, the inside, or the outside. For this, it doesn't really matter. We leave it on center, it'll be fine. Um, click OK and go select, deselect. So that's, that's it pretty much done. The only thing we have to do is copy and paste the logo in here. Um, so a few places, we could put it down the bottom. We could put it down here. I wouldn't mind even if you put it down there, it would be fine. Um, oh, the other thing is the, the text. Um, oh, the other, sorry, as well, you can see all of the layers related to postcard back are all down here. Anything related to your postcard front will be put in here. If you put it in the wrong place, it's no big deal. You can just literally drag them up and down. Let me just drag that down there. Does it work? I can drag things where I want. So don't worry about it if you put it in the wrong place, but I guess try and put it on the right layer or in the right, on the right artboard. Um, the last thing is the logo, which I haven't, I'm not going to do that in this video because I haven't, I have to get the logo and uh, I'll put it up in Google Classroom, but it's literally, you can open it in Illustrator and copy and paste it in and scale it down preferably to get it to fit. Um, and think of an obvious place, like it could go up there, it could go down here, down here, over in this corner, the top corner, it's up to you. The other thing is a very small piece of type about what's on the front of your postcard. So to do that in Photoshop, you come to your type tool. Again, we're in postcard back. Um, again, the obvious places are sort of this top section here, maybe down here. Keep the middle section free for a person's kind of postcard content. Um, so what we'll do is we'll click and we'll drag and we'll make a little text box and we'll put in now. <clears throat> I want you to make a decision about the typeface. Don't just go with Myriad Pro because it's the default typeface. Pick something that you think is going to work. And what you want is a, a typeface that works at a small size. So something like, for example, these scripty typefaces. Let me just... Hello? Yeah, I'm just typing any old thing here. Let me zoom in. Script typefaces don't work well at a small size. Okay, and we'll be doing a class next year called typography where I'll be explaining the psychology kind of, well, I guess the maths and the psychology behind why that doesn't work. Um, generally, the typefaces that do work at a small size are ones that have what's called a high X height. Again, we'll deal with that more next year, but things like, like Arial wouldn't be bad, although it's more for on screen. Um, 
Avenir wouldn't be bad. Baskerville, if you wanted a serif typeface, wouldn't be too bad. Uh, what else would work? Century Gothic is okay. That has a, you know, it's a nice rounded kind of typeface. Gil Sands is very good. In fact, I'm going to pick that one for this. Helvetica is another one that has a, a nice high X height. Um, so let's go with Gil Sands, regular, and it would want to be quite small. It's A6. So you're talking eight, maybe even seven point. Maybe at some stage do a little test print on the black and white printer of just the back and see what size the type is. So very small type. Um, so we'll put on bog man from cabin. That was somebody's. And we'll put in, this is... All about the bog man from Cavan, which was discovered, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, don't put in blah, 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 but put in the, the correct content, obviously. Uh, the bowman, the bog man. Um, you could even have, say, this section in bold. Do we have Gilson? Bold, we do. Um, okay, so a little bit on the on the back, just about the actual thing that's on the front, and that's pretty much it. Um, so if you could work on that today, you, like if you all get the back designed, the front, um, you seem to have some really lovely illustrations that you've done. We'll scan those in, scan them in, three hundred dots per inch, and uh, what size are the illustrations? By the way, are they A five? Are they on an A four sheet or something? Different, all different, different sizes. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to make a decision. The postcard is A6, which is if you fold an A4 sheet in quarters. So if I took this, what is that? I don't know what that is. I'm gonna erect that on someone. Here's an A4 sheet. Okay, so A6 is that size, right? If your illustration is smaller than that. Is anybody's illustration smaller than A6? One of mine is. One of yours is. If you're, if you're using the one that's smaller than A6, you'd want to scan it in at a higher resolution, higher than 300, say like 600 or something. Um, if you're, say like these were, are on an A4 sheet, scan that in at 300 dots per inch. When you paste it into Photoshop, it would be too big, which is fine, and just scale it down. Um, I'll show you now in a minute. Let me finish this up and get started on this and I'll, I'll, I'll help. I'll go around and help you all, but let me get this little video put up. But yeah, the front, your illustration will go on there. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Um, so let's save this and we'll stop the video. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, if a postcard is that size,